Hello, everyone. My name is Rich Ottinger, and I am the Marketing Programs Manager for Park Systems. Normally, I'd be coming to you from the Park Nanoscience Center in Albany, New York, but today we are all at our home offices. Welcome to today's webinar, Recent Innovations in Scanning Tunneling Microscopy and Park Smart Scan. Before we begin, let me give you a quick overview of today's session. The presentation will last approximately 35 minutes, after which we will have time for a short Q&A session. Please enter your questions at any time into the questions module of GoToWebinar. If you prefer, at the end of the presentation, you may click the raise your hand button and I will unmute your line so you can ask your question. It is now my pleasure to introduce to you Jolly Zhang, an applications engineer here at Park Systems. Please welcome Jolly. Thank you uh, for the introduction. Hello, everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, depending on where you are. My name is Jolly, and I'm the technical services engineer here at Park Systems. It is my great pleasure to give you the uh, short webinar about scanning tunneling microscopy, or STM, and the recent innovation of Park Systems software, Smart Scan. Before we get started, I want to give you a brief introduction about our company, Park Systems. Park Systems is a world leading manufacturer of atomic force microscopes and emerging nanoscale microscopy systems. We develop solutions for many research and industrial applications, enable advance in science from major university, national labs, and a wide variety of national companies specialized in diverse fields. Our product line covers just about every usage with fully manual to fully automatic AFM systems. As you can see here, we have our research product line starting from our NXE7 system, which is the most economic choice for research AFM, to our NX HiVac system for vacuum AFM imaging. We also provide you with industrial system from NX. H, uh, NXHDM to NX3DM for wafer categorization purposes. In general, our AFM technology offers best accuracy, the highest resolution, and it is the easiest to use on market. Uh, if you want to learn more about our company and our products, please visit parksystem.com for more information. So without further ado, let's get started. Here is the brief outline of today's presentation. Basically, the focus of my webinar is to demonstrate the feasibility of STM imaging using Park Systems instruments. After that, I will slightly change the gear and introduce you some of the recent innovation for our data acquisition software, SmartScan, for our users' benefits. So uh, let's first start look at the basic principle of STM. STM is one of the application modes for scanning probe microscopy family. It was invented in 1981 by Binninger and Raw at uh, IBM Zurich. Five years later, they were awarded uh, uh, the Nobel Prize in Physics for its invention. STM is based on the concept of quantum tunneling with a sh uh, sharp tip, conduct, uh, it is conducting, and uh, it, the tip is brought very near, usually within 10 angstrom to the conductive sample surface to be examined. Uh, bias applied between these two uh, will allow electron to tunnel through the vacuum between them. This resulting tunneling current is a function of tip positioning, applied voltage, and the local density state of the sample. Uh, based on these simplified uh, equations, where you can see that the tunneling current, IT, is exponentially proportional to the distance between the tip to the sample surface. Usually, with a change of one angstrom in distance will cause a change of nearly one order of magnitude in current. Thus, this uh, facilitates the high vertical uh, resolution of STM. Here, Brio shows the schematic diagram of STM instruments. Similar to other SPM technology, a feedback loop is employed, which constantly adjusts the Z position of the tip relative to the sample using the uh, Z piezo. 
the tunneling current can be used as a feedback signal to feed in the computer so that to control the GPSO move up and down, thus mapping the sample surface. Usually, this tunneling current is have a very small magnitude. Therefore, a current amplifier is needed before it proceeds into the into an image. Taking advantage of the previous mentioned extreme distance dependence of the tunneling flow between the probe and the sample, that makes it possible for STM to achieve atomic resolution. Therefore, uh, STM is very useful to study surface roughness, defects, and surface reaction in material like catalysts. And STM is also an important tool in research surrounding semiconductors and um, microelectronics. Despite this uh, super high resolution of STM, there are huge obstacles that prevent the prevalence of STM, such as the cause and complexity of an STM systems. So to overcome these advantages and make STM available for more researchers, Park Systems introduced you the STM module, which uh, includes a special design STM probe hand and the internal no noise, no noise uh, current amplifier. And this STM module is available in all Park Systems research product line, including both NX series or XE series, such as our uh, NX10 systems. As I just mentioned, STM utilizes a sharpened and conducting tip. Unlike conventional AFM, uh, where a silicon or silicon nitride can the level is used as probe. Usually we use a conducting wire. In our case here is a platinum iridium wires. And uh, how do we prepare this wire to make it a probe? We, we, uh, you, we do that using a polling method. To be specific, uh, this wire was held tight against a plier in one hand and use a a sharp scissor hold 45 degree on the other hand. By pulling the end of this wire using the scissor while snipping the wire within the plier, a sharp STM tip was created as shown here. Some research lab might utilize a uh, chemical etching methods. However, uh, we found out that this non-etching pulling method is very easy and the image quality is good enough for general purpose. Once the tip is prepared, it will be mounted to our special designed STM probe hand. Here you can see the protrusion of the platinum iridium wires. And then we will have a, a link, link wire connecting to the STM head extension module and then through cable to connecting to our internal current amplifier into our NX systems. And this uh, internal current amplifier can have a variable gain from 10 to the 6 to the 10 to the 12 volts per ampere. And our sample chart allows user to apply sample bias with variation from negative 10 to 10 volts. This all together created you the simple STM module uh, assembled into our NX10 systems. To shield it it, uh, to show a static or non-static electromagnetic field of 50 to 60 hertz, you can also uh, assemble the Faraday cage. Once the system was set up, a smart scan software is used to uh, categorize the sample surface. As a proof of concept in this uh, experiment, I use ultra flat gold surface that was uh, freshly peered from the mica. And uh, this was uh, done in imaging ambient environment using our NX10 systems. And the tip was uh, uh, previously mentioned, uh, platinum iridium wires. And the scanning parameter is showing here. And now let's check it out, out our results. So here shows you uh, our high quality one by one uh, height imaging and acquired by our STM uh, module in NX10 systems. And right side is the 3D views of this uh, height images. You can clearly see the different layers of gold terrace and gold uh, islands. 
and the roughness is about 3.48 angstroms. And this uh, clearly steps shows you the high resolution uh, of our STM module. So keep zooming the uh, imaging into 500 by 500 nanometer into another area. We can see this 60 degrees angle of gold 111 terrace ash. This is a characteristic of epitaxial gold 111 orientations, which was uh, not usually shown uh, in other uh, AFM systems. The 3D display shown on the right side also through those terraces were separated by well-defined gold steps. And these gold steps have a, a roughness about 2.3 angstroms. By keep zoom in this uh, imaging into uh, 200 by 200 image area, the gold step height of this atomic uh, flat 111 terrace was quantified into our line profile. And uh, this was done in our uh, data analysis software, XCI. And this profile shows you the flat terrace have a single gold monolayer step height about 2 to 2.6 angstroms. This is in well agreement with theoretic uh, value of monolayer gold uh, thin film height. Not only does our STM module enable users to get high quality images showing here using STM tip as a nanometer scale contact, you can also generate scanning tunneling spectroscopy or STS result. As showing here, uh, this STS result provide you a plot of current as a function of the bias. It can be measured at the selected point after taking the previous STM image, like this uh, mark show here. And uh, it can be used to study the local electrons electronic state of the sample at the designated uh, positions. Since a lot of research scientists also wish to use a high resolution of STM to study the chemical and biological reactions, which is usually taking place in liquid environments. Therefore, I want to show you the feasibility of STM imaging in liquid. So we, I will use the same STM module that uh, showed before, therefore, and also using the platinum iridium wires. However, uh, the setup has a slightly difference. We will have an additional steps. We need to insulate the STM tip with a layer of coating. And uh, in here, I use nail polish paint as a coating material. And to make the coating uniform, you might need to uh, coat it for several times and then air dry it for uh, half an hour. And after that, you can eye examine it or examine it in our vision view of our systems on the 10x objectives to see uh, if the coating is uniform and then assemble into our STM probe hand. And then since this is a liquid imaging, uh, so we will utilize our liquid cells. For uh, normal researchers, uh, researchers, you can use your own liquid cell or use Petri dish. But uh, however, you have to make sure the sample was mounted well. In this case, we use a, <clears throat> we use a clip to mount it. And this clip was also insulated with nail polish. And the sample you, we utilize here is C10 style coated normal gold, which were created by thermal evaporation. And the liquid I used in this experiment is uh, just DI water. All the other setup is similar. We still need to uh, connect it into, into our internal current amplifier. Uh, and also we need to uh, utilize the uh, um, STM probe head. Now let's move out to our result. And of course, this image was still done uh, using our smart scan software. Here shows you the uh, two by 1.4 image area. You can still uh, see this multi-layer gold terrace and the terrace looks like different per, 
uh, from previous uh, sample in air because this was uh, deposited into in with uh, thermal evaporation, so different preparation methods. And this line profile still shows you the Enstrom height difference between different layers of gold. So in summary, and those above results demonstrate the uh, capability of the PARC system AFM in performing STM mode in liquid and uh, in air. And uh, the user-friendly STM uh, module is very easy to set up and is versatile compatible in all our PARC system product lines. Now, uh, on the second part of the webinar, I'm going to introduce you the uh, recent innovation of our data acquisition software, SmartScan. As all our users are very familiar with our SmartScan, it, it is the operating software for Park Systems AFM, allow new users, especially uh, beginner AFMer, to produce high quality AFM imaging with simple clicks using auto mode. While operating in manual mode, SmartScan provides all the function and tool necessary for experienced users to feel at home. Besides these known features, I want to introduce you the pinpoint nanomechanic mode, which allows, which already embed in our SmartScan. This mode allows users to accurately quantify uh, nanomechanical properties such as stiffness, adhesion force, and the modulus by collecting a uh, four season curve data in real times. Then I will talk about our uh, new function, Smart Liso, the nano lithography function for enhanced nano manipulation and nano fabrication. This is a new function that will be released soon uh, in SmartScan in our next update. So first of all, why do we care about pinpoint mode? So conventionally, Research rely on one discipline curve to acquire uh, mechanical properties by indent a hard cantilever in, onto the sample surface. It was done one point at a time, and uh, it is pretty local. Therefore, uh, since most of the sample are heterogeneous, to get a full picture of the mechanical property of the sample, it is necessary to get both a distribution image and a quantitative data spontaneously. Now the question is, how do we do that? So in making the practice possible, PARC system pinpoint modes provide the most effective uh, method to acquire nanomechanical mapping with high speed and accuracy. So how do we do that? Is that do, uh, during operation, while uh, measuring sample topography, the XY scanner stop at each acquisition, and during this pose, the Z scanner takes a rapid force distance curve with fine, uh, fine controlled force distance and contact time between the tip and the sample surface. And we do this uh, approach retract reactions at each pixels. So for say we have 256 by 256 pixels, then in total, we will have 65,000 uh, force distance curve generated. And once the cantilever diffraction reached to the, our design for threshold, the Z height, uh, Z scanner height recorded and then help us to get the topographic information. And then after uh, collecting all the force and different distance curve at each pixels, how do we get uh, all the stiffness, adhesion force, and uh, modulus? It's based on uh, calculating, uh, uh, analyzing the force distance curve at each pixels. For, for example, the stiffness was the slope of the uh, force distance curve and the y-axis of, of this is the adhesion force, and the modulus was calculated by the two points selected by the user using herzing models. And finally, and in pinpoint mode, all this force curve were calculated and generated and uh, uh, 
plot into the uh, distribution and output as image showing here. And this is a, a polystyrene low density of uh, polyethylene samples and with topography, adhesion force, modulus, and stiffness. And here you can clearly see how our software output live for season curve at each pixel and quickly result in the uh, mechanical property mappings and within just 20 minutes. So another recent innovation in our uh, smart scan is the smart LISO, which is a nano lithography using smart scan. And it is a controlled nano manipulation via proc systems uh, nano lithography mode, allows you to manipulate or create patterns through a diff controlled applied force of voltage, such as bias mode or Z scanner mode or set point mode. And this is a screenshot of our nano lithography panels in smart scan. As you can see, this is still under development and we will uh, release the software upgrades uh, soon in, in the summer. So if you want to know more about the smart lithography, you can contact our technical support teams. And uh, on the right left side, you can see you can clearly uh, choose different control modes from the scanner mode to bias mode, and uh, also uh, set up different uh, control parameters. In the middle, you can design your uh, lithography features and add using previous scanned AFM image as imaging uh, cameras. And right side is for each features, you can precisely control whether the lens and the scanning parameters and also the set points or applied bias. And as a proof of concept, I will just introduce you the result of bias mode. So bias mode is, uh, the basic principle of bias mode is that it utilizes voltage poles applied between the tip and the sample surface to generate an electric field and which allows local oxidation to be used to form the oxide feature on the sample surface. Usually we use silicon as substrate and uh, that's generally silicon oxide. The water thin film formed on the surface is important as it plays important role to uh, forming the oxide. The amount of water molecules and the voltage applied will determine the amount of ions and the available for oxidation reactions. The negative charge ions will flow away from the bias tip and react with the silicon molecules and that forms silicon oxide on the surface. So now let's uh, move to our results. And so this result was generated by the bias molding using our recent smart uh, LISO software and then this feature for showing here is topography imaging and lateral images and the corresponding line uh, profile cursors. This, uh, the feature is concentric circles with an average height about 2.5 nanometers and width about 150 to 200 nanometers. And uh, to summarize, uh, in this webinar, I have showed you the ability of PARC's NX series AFM in performing STM in liquid and in air, as well as our recent innovations in smart scan software, such as pinpoint mode and uh, or smart LISO mode, which allows you to uh, get the simple, simple modules or uh, manipulate the pattern on the sample surface through applied force or voltage. In conclusion, our PROC NX series AFM offers the most versatile AFM STM system for diverse applications. And uh, that's pretty much it. And uh, thank you very much for your time and listening. And for more information, please visit our website or contact our sales for inquiries. Or for current users, you can contact our tech support team for application or technical questions.
And with that, I'm happy to take uh, your questions. All right, thank you very much for the presentation. We do have two questions so far that I will ask. And if anybody else comes up with a question, please use the raise your hand feature or type it into the questions module. Uh, first question is, how do you quantify tip radius? Okay, so in general, the tip radius was pre can be quantified with SEM, but in our systems, you can get all the radius and uh, specifications in uh, with uh, in smart scan software, and uh, also we have all the specifications when uh, in the spec sheets when you purchase our tip from our companies. All right, and the next question was, what is the latest smart scan software that is available? Oh, the latest software where is RTM 12D. And uh, if you are using the previous versions, you can uh, email tech support rparksystem.com and we will provide the most updated smart scan software. All right, and it looks like we have one hand raised. So I will try to unmute the line for you, uh, Riza. Can you ask your question? Uh, hi, can you hear me? Yes, yes, we can. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you so much. Uh, so I, I already typed my question, but uh, I, I can actually ask you right now. So uh, I wonder if it's possible to mount the uh, like a uh, self-fabricated cantilevers because in our research group, we are fabricating special type of AFM cantilevers. So I'm interested to see if it's possible to uh, mount or cantilevers into your NX10 AFM tools or we should buy a specific mounting mechanism or we should we have to design it how uh, have you been in uh, any situation that you need to mount any like non-standard afm cantilevers on your systems so i'm still assuming that your cantilever is a uh, rectangular uh, cantilever beams and for that kind of cantilever yes we can provide you a mounting ways you there are two ways first you can use our uh, prepare our provided uh, clip type chip carriers that should come mm -hmm. with our NX10 systems when you purchase our systems. For that, uh, it's use pressure to mount your cantilever, uh, your own unmounted cantilevers. And uh, therefore, you can uh, assemble it to our uh, probe hand. Or you can use a super glue to uh, mount it to our chip carriers as well. Okay, and uh, is there any uh, specific information on the website that I can take a look at them? Yeah, we do have, uh, you can visit our set website, uh, check for probe hands or, or mounting air, yeah. mounting, uh, unmounted probe, and or you can just email the con uh, customer support. I will provide you more with more information. Okay, thank you so much. Thanks for the question. We do have a couple more that came in, so I will ask those. Um, can one do conductive AFM with pinpoint, but with IV curbs from every point? Yes, that is uh, possible. And uh, we do have a webinar, I remember, in YouTube channels that uh, it's conductive uh, pinpoint uh, AFM. You can log more into that or go to our website. And uh, also, uh, you can do just IV curve using uh, spectroscopy mode in our smart scan software there is a function called gradients that allow you to do 32 by 32 or uh, 64 by 64 grids with in, instead uh, to do the uh, iv curve at each pixels all right uh, next question is oh, sorry i just moved on my screen what is the difference between the images obtained in regular imaging mode and pinpoint mode resolution and speed. Thank you. Okay, so regular uh, FM mode just allows you to get topography image and which is a key component for all AFM mode. And but pinpoint mode also allows you to get uh, additional modulus, adhesion force, stiffness and uh, adhesion energies in images at the same times. And uh, also it is a quantitative information so you can get the numbers out of, uh, out of the images from uh, our pinpoint mode. 
And uh, for the speed, it all depends on how much, how many pixels you choose. In this case, with 256 by 256 pixels, it takes about 20 minutes. And uh, also, it also depends on how, how fast you move the uh, probe from one position to the other positions. All right. Uh, next question. How do you get high resolution scans of insulating oxide surfaces? Uh, for insulated oxide surface, and uh, are you just talk if you are just talking about topography image, and uh, I don't think there's any difficulty in acquiring uh, those using our non-contact mode. Okay. Uh, can STM be used to study the surface of non-conducting organic molecules self-assembled on a metallic surface and get to know the alignment of molecules? I would say the answer is yes. As long as you deposit the molecules into a metallic surface, such as gold or HOPG, you were able to see the self-assembled monolayer on surface. So uh, a lot of researchers that do a simple STM experiments using a uh, sile and they deposit it into gold to see the sile uh, self-assembled monolayer of sile on surface. Okay. Next one. Uh, could you suggest some ideas for cell imaging in liquid when the adhesion is too high? I cannot get a flat baseline for the maximum setting possible. Okay. So. Usually in liquid, it will reduce the adhesion force. But if you think that adhesion is too high, I can you can also use our ping pong mode to acquire liquid imaging because it's doing a, a, a tr approach and retract at each pixel so that should reduce your adhesion force. And also you can uh, kind of uh, coating your tip with some some chemical uh, molecules that reduce, such as non-adhesive uh, molecules to reduce the adhesion force. I will usually use some uh, silane coating to the tips before, before doing the image. And uh, this is a very uh, acceptable uh, coating method for AFM uh, probes. You can just lock a uh, website and Google uh, silane coating for probes and then you will get the uh, protocols. All right, here's another one. With regard to the question of quantifying the radius of the tip, mm. I understand that at the beginning, I can get it from the information provided by the software or the information from the tip that I buy. But if it wears out in the process, how can I quantify it? Uh, usually, if you imagine, you can see it from the, Im the images you have taken. And uh, when you talk it from the beginning and uh, in the end, when you see some of the artifacts that such as the uh, granule domains become bigger, or uh, you see some of the uh, triangle features, and that means uh, the, the radius of the tip is getting bigger and the tip is getting downed. And uh, that is how I, quanti I, I use uh, AFM imaging as a way to see whether my tip is good or not. And also another way to prevent tip from doubting is that you can use non-contact mode instead of using contact mode or tapping mode because non-contact mode prevents your tip from touching the surface and the, while maintains uh, the, the high resolution images. All right. Uh, why is it possible to image varying to topography of cells in liquid mode using pinpoint but not tapping? Um, for pinpoint mode, it's 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 completely different from tapping uh, because I think you think pinpoint is similar as non-contact, but it's different. For pinpoint, it's taking force distance curve at each pixel. Therefore, at each pixel, they will lift up and move to the next position. And the, the lift uh, height will be uh, several hundred nanometer or, or one, micrometer, one micrometer depends on how you define it. And since the lift height is so tall, that, therefore it will definitely pull your uh, away from the adhesion uh, force uh, regions, which is uh, within one nanometer or 
five nanometer regions. All right, here's another question for you. How do you calibrate your scan, Piezo? By taking HOPG atomic images? If that's true, won't the calibration change with the change in tip length? We do have a calibration sample, but it's not what you stated. This calibration sample is usually what we call 100 mg. It's a predominated height calibration standard with a height about 100 nanometer. And it's consists of silicon oxide structure on silicon chip. And the silicon oxide structure usually uh, have 10 micron or five micron features that's used to uh, use for XY uh, access calibration. And uh, the X Y and the calibration will uh, conducted periodically to ensure the AFM scanner uh, work uh, with high precision and high accuracy. And uh, I don't uh, see why the tip radius will affect the calibration. All right, thank you very much, Jolly. Um, I think that we're going to wrap it up there for today. If I didn't get to your question, I will go through everything that's been entered and make sure that we reach out to you with an answer for your question in a follow-up email. Uh, keep a lookout for more upcoming webinar announcements over the next few weeks as we try to increase our online activities. The next one scheduled is on Friday, April 17th, once again at noon Eastern Daylight Time and features Dr. Rigoberto Advincula of Case Western Reserve University. You can register for that at parksystems.com slash webinar 2020. Thank you all for joining us for this session. You can find more information about Park Systems AFM at parksystems.com. And please direct any AFM questions you have to inquiry at parksystems.com. If you have any questions about this webinar, feel free to reach out to me directly. And my email address is richard at parksystems.com. Thank you all very much. And we hope to see you at another session soon. Thank you.